All right, today we're going to take a look at how to coach your Apex AI assistant. Uh, it may sound funny, uh, but AI does take a little bit of coaching, and I'm going to share with you a few tricks that I've learned uh, over the past few weeks. For starters, uh, you, you have to prep your Apex Apex tenancy, so it will tie into the OCI LLMs. If you haven't, there's a video on my GitHub page. This will be in the notes. You have to set up this first. It takes about five full minutes, very quick. All right, so let's get started. Um, well, for today, we have a blank workspace that we're going to start with. And what we're going to do uh, is do our best to replicate some Apex coaching. So for starters, we're going to create a table. All right, next, we're gonna add some table comments, but not to everything. And finally, we're gonna add some data. We can select from our table to make sure the data inserted. There we go, we're looking good. You should see 12 players. Uh, one thing you wanna do for this demo is make sure you set up here the number of rows returned to 50. Okay, there we go. All right, the first way we need to coach our AI uh, is to make sure that we have table comments and column comments. The better these comments are, uh, the better your results will be from the AI. So we'll go ahead and say, does my table have any comments? We'll hit run. All right, the answer to this is some columns do and some columns don't, which is what I think you'll see in a lot of cases where databases have been around for some time. So let's go ahead and find out which columns are missing comments. All right, we can see these columns. The first way we coach our AI is to kind of use it to generate meaningful comments on these columns. Now kind of the cool thing here is I can say, uh, I wanna look at the SLG column and I wanna create a comment that describes baseball slugging percentage, right? So we can give context of what the column is to the LLM. And it'll not only in, in the query builder mode generate the statement, but as you can see, it's also going out and using the embodiment of the AI. That's, actually, that's the right calculation. So let's just make sure it runs. There we go. Now this LLM in, uh, that I'm using here, this is the Grok model, it's pretty smart. So I can say repeat for the SAC column. And this is a sacrifice column, right? So it understands the abbreviation for me and generated it right away. On my examples, many of the column names are common abbreviation for baseball calculations. So we're going to say repeat above, uh, but for quite a few different columns that don't have comments. All right, we can see here that it generated it. Let's insert it. Now this will fail when I go to run it. Oh, it's got a reserve word. It, it doesn't know how to run it in here. So this is the next way you need to coach your AI. Sometimes, this is while this is a correct statement, so I'd have to run them one-on-one, -on -one, one at a time, but I don't really want to do that. So let's go ahead and say, write it so it runs all at once in Apex. Now we'll try again. And that worked. Now just to show that that worked, we'll go back up to the top here and we'll run our query again. And we can see we're down to only the primary key in the video column as null, which is good. That means we got everything else. We're gonna ask it to create a query that calculates the advanced baseball metric weighted on base average per player. We didn't tell it what this calculation was. It's actually going out there, finding it for us, coming back, so we'll hit insert. It's the correct, correct algorithm, as it looks to me, and we'll see if it'll run. All right, it did run, but look at this formatting. Uh, AI, you gotta do a little better than this, so let's coach it on how to correct the format. There we go. So now it adjusted to the three decimals that we typically see with any, any batting average in baseball. All right, now that our table comments are in place, we're gonna clear everything out. We're gonna clear the chats. So we're gonna start over. It won't have the context. And we're gonna ask it to, based on the number of games played by a player in the table, uh, create a nine player lineup and forecast the number of runs that that lineup could potentially score based on the historic data in the table. 
We can see it came back. Get a little more space here. Go ahead and hit insert. Let's see if this runs. All right, it ran, but man, I'd love to be on a team that could score 59 runs. So we need to coach it on the time frame that we want, which is a single game. All right, now this is good. This doesn't always happen, but sometimes you're going to get errors in the generation. So you just tell it, hey, you got an error. And it fixes it. There we can go. 6.6 .6 runs a game. That's about what I would have expected. Now let's push it a little bit further. Let's say a player gets hurt. Old, old Brody got hurt. Let's adjust. Bro, oh, it didn't take out Brody. Let's try that again. Maybe I need to rephrase. And there we go. Without Brody, we only score 5.6 runs a game. OK, so so far we've used everything in our query builder. Uh, but there are actually two types of AI in the assistant here. So we're going to clear our chat, and we're going to go over to the general assistant, OK? And we're going to use this next. Now, the difference between the two, if you're not familiar, the general assistant doesn't have access to the, the DDL. It doesn't know the tables or the columns, uh, but it will generate code for you. So what we're going to show you here real quick is, is how you can kind of use the best of both worlds, OK, to coach your AI to generate stuff faster. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and issue a query. Uh, and I'm going to keep this open. This is one we did earlier. So we can see everything in our team stats table, all the column comments, uh, where they're not null. OK, uh, next, we're going to go out and prompt it to use this information. So we'll go here and say you have a table called team stats with the following columns and comments. Use this for the ask to come. Let's go ahead and copy all this. And this is why we needed the 50 rows earlier. We'll paste it in and see if it understands. All right, so it understood. So now let's do some more complex ask. Okay, this first ask is a common one from college, which is what are the total number of lineups that the, the manager can ask, right? So we'll go ahead and ask it. So we generate a nice little code block here. We can see it's going to count through. It looks to find the total number of combinations of a nine player lineup. And it tells us what it what it's trying to do. So let's insert the code, see if it runs. And it did. But that combination is off. So we got to coach it just a little bit more. All right, so now it understands its mistake. It changed the calculation, and we'll test it. There you go. This is actually correct. There are 220 combinations of lineups uh, worth nine unique players if you've got 12 unique players on the team. Now we're really going to push it a little bit. So we are going to attempt to write a program that outputs the best nine player batting lineup along with the player's average hits and RBIs based on balls, quality at bats, and runs scored from the team stats table. Remember, it's still got the context. We want to do the code block that aims uh, at uh, to put the best players most likely on base early in lineup, followed by the players most likely to hit them in with RBIs. As a coaching staff, you value speed and stolen bases and then quality at bats if the players are similar. After printing your batting average, write a brief summary in 350 characters or less uh, of your lineup and the expected number of runs to score in a nine inning game based on you, what you created, right? So we're asking it a bunch of stuff at one time. Let's see what I can do. All right, here's our logic that it created, the PL SQL program. Pretty long, so we'll go ahead and insert it, and let's see if it runs. All in all, it got pretty close. Got all the columns right. Uh, the average didn't have the right formatting, but uh, and it doesn't have quite the right calculation here at the end, but we can still keep playing with it, coach it some more. All right, so let's get to double check some things and fix the formatting. All right, 
let's see what came back. Still didn't fix the average, interesting. Well, sometimes the human really has to coach, right? So if you look here, over here uh, at this particular code block, the padding is off just by one. If I were to copy this, or to hit run, we can see that that does fix it. So we need to tell it. There we go. Now we'll continue to add some more complexity to the thing, the program. So we want to build another section that says the likelihood that the player will have an extra base hit. All right, we can see that worked. We'll go back and we're gonna add base and balls and QAB to the batting lineup columns. It's right there. We'll keep adding to the program because we wanna see now what our bench player stats look like, the folks who aren't in the game. Look at that, added in our bench players. We'll go back and we wanna adjust the lineup so that anyone batting less than 300 uh, is batting sixth to ninth. So we should see Chase move down if this works correctly. Let's fix the error. You can see here, it understood the error, and we're gonna try again. Look at that. Didn't adjust our lineup though. Well, now I got it correct. So overall here, if you analyze how much code's written, Got a couple hundred lines of code. It's done a pretty good job. So let's ask it one more question. I can't answer that. <laughs> can't coach it through that one, but the answer is yes, we'll win. So this was a quick look at how you can use both the General Assistant and the Apex Query Assistant AI Wizards and different ways that I coach it through uh, producing what I want. Now, I'll be a simple example today. You can see here how in very quick order you could do a lot of work very fast with the right setup.